Well, hello there, everybody. God bless you, and welcome to The Breaker 2.0. This is your host, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, where we're believing for a breakthrough in every area of your life, especially as we're starting off this new year. And today, we're going to talk about breakthrough in spiritual warfare. And what greater friend and guest to have today than the one and only General of Deliverance, Evangelist John Ramirez. Man of God, welcome to the show. God bless you, my brother. I am blessed to be your friend, your brother in Christ, and share the battlefield. I, I still am blessed to even have the opportunity to minister in your church. I, I was greatly uh, impacted by that. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate you, appreciate your ministry. Thank you so much. Wow, well, praise God. We miss you, and we're looking forward to a great new year. Uh, I think it's funny, Evangelist. This is actually take two, because in take one, an earthquake just took place. Here in California, they were shaking. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you, we we in the end times. And there's a great shaking even as we're ministering and releasing the glory of God. So, Amen. Good. God true, is good. True, true. It's very true. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be an incredible year. And today, I want to talk about breakthrough in spiritual warfare. Now, obviously, uh, you're a general of spiritual warfare. You're a general of deliverance. Um, you know, why is it so important for us to be effective in spiritual warfare today? Well, I think, I think, I think, you know, I, I consider myself to be the donkey that Jesus used in the New Testament. When Jesus sit on your back, your whole life is transformed. Amen. And my, 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 I think the big thing about spiritual warfare, we look at Jesus' life, the three temptations. We look at him, get baptized in the Jordan. The father spoke, Holy Spirit fought upon him. What did Jesus do? He didn't, he his ministry started in the wilderness. Three temptations. So every person that call, is called for ministry, any person is called to be a follower of Christ, your ministry is going to start in the wilderness, spiritual warfare, and move forward to get to the promised land that God has for you. Wow, that's so good. I mean, the Bible says the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, we think the wilderness is a cursed place. Or, it, you know, it's a place of uh, being separated from God when actually it's the Holy Spirit drawing you to the wilderness to strengthen you in spiritual warfare and victory. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know we know the Israelites, right? They, they have to go to the wilderness to get to the promised land, right? In the Old Testament, Jesus started his ministry, not only being baptized, but being led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. So I think a lot of us complain about the wilderness, but we, we, we want it's like we want the certificate, but we don't want to take the class. Oh, uh, that's a good word. But the wilderness is also the place of purging, where God gets rid of uh, the soulish things from Egypt, from the world. And it's the process. I'm afraid evangelists today, especially with social media, people are getting instantly influential. I feel the Lord right now. They're getting instantly influential overnight with social media, but they have not walked through the testing of character of the process in the wilderness. Amen. And the wilderness is an intimate place for God. Joe had his wilderness. He had an intimate place for God. Paul had his wilderness. Peter had his wilderness. Denied Jesus three times, ran away. We all have to have a wilderness because you will not see God the way he wants you to see it if you don't have a wilderness in your life. And the wilderness is purging. The, the preparation, the growth, the mentorship of the Holy Spirit, but also the wilderness is a relationship with God. Because if you don't have God in your life, you'll never come out the wilderness. Wow. Well, let's talk about uh, your wilderness time. Um, was there an extended time of wilderness? I mean, just for me, now I've been in full-time ministry 14 years, and I've been walking with the Lord about 15 years now. But probably the first seven, eight years, it felt like, and extended the wilderness, but God was taking me deeper. And then around 25, 26 years of age, God began to promote and bless and the fruits began to come. Was there an extended time of wilderness for you? Oh, absolutely. I think I think before I was able to hold Mike in my hand, it took seven years, eight years uh, of my, my time. I think I was home for the past three, three years reading Ephesians 6, you know, and uh, that's all I knew, Ephesians 6. All I knew was Ephesians 6. For two and a half, three years, and uh, basically getting getting intimate with the word. Uh, also, the residue that I had, the spiritual residue, I came from the sh the shadows of the demonic, at the highest level of witchcraft, Satan, demonic principality, 
marine spirit, water spirit, familiar spirit, tarot cards, all this thing I came out of. And all this didn't had not only to be purged, but I had to really uh, grow. To, to I think the growth of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, the greater is Jesus Christ in my life than the things that I left behind. And I think for me, it took seven, eight years before I was able to step in the platform and, and say something about Jesus or my testimony. Wow, it took seven and eight years. And what were you doing in that time? Obviously, you said you studied Ephesians 6. I mean, what what were you doing in that seven, eight time? I'm sure there were a lot of battles, you know, like kind of going back and forth in a sense. Well, you know, I think my, my I think I felt like I felt like David. You know, I felt like David. I was cutting grass for the church. I was cleaning the bathroom, putting the chairs in place. Uh, th that's what I was doing. I was uh, coming to church early in case they needed me to do something or move something or clean something. Or cut something. I did that for many years. I mean, I I I, I really uh, serve in the church. I serve. I serve because you know when you serve under a ministry under someone's authority, then God can trust you with a ministry and put an authority in your life. Well, wow, absolutely. And uh, you know, for me, Evangelist, when I came to the Lord, I really dived into the wisdom books, Proverbs, mm -hmm. Psalms, and Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. Like that was my meat and my potatoes, right? For mm -hmm. about five, six years. You said Ephesians 6. You dived into Ephesians 6 for two to three years. Now, why is that significant for you and for those that are watching this broadcast today? Well, I, 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 think, I think a lot of people were saying to me, and again, I came from hell to church, right? Because I died in 1999 in the Bronx in my apartment. I left my body, went to hell, met the cross, met the devil, and came back into my body, and I became a believer. There was no choir. There was no one uh, singing hallelujah song. There was just darkness and separation from God in hell and uh, came back and became a believer. But I think the preparation for me was is uh, people, you know, I took people's advice. People say, hey, we, we Ephesians, you know, uh, spiritual warfare. And I'm like, what is spiritual warfare? Uh, we Ephesians, you've been called to be an evangelist. I mean, oh, what is that? You know, uh, what is that? So I think in my time in Ephesians, I think it really brought spiritual maturity, spiritual clarity, revelation, uh, spiritual wisdom in my life of how God was shaping me, the pot I was shaping the clay. Wow. Amen and amen. Well, obviously, God wants to equip us. And for all of our viewers watching right now, I believe in the show with Evangelist John Ramirez, there's going to be breakthrough keys for you to break through in spiritual warfare. Evangelist, before uh, the show, you were sharing with me that 2023 was the heaviest year of spiritual warfare for you. Now, this might sound like a shocker to all of our viewers and watchers. But they can look at you. They can look at us and say, wow, you're a man of God. You're an anointed vessel. How can you experience spiritual warfare? Talk to us about that. I mean, you know, it, it, when I left, when I left the demonic kingdom, uh, I got attacked for 30 days beyond, you can, beyond human comprehension. I will sleep during the day to stay up at night to the demons to come. And I was beyond demonic attack, pulling me off my bed, trying to yank my soul out of my body. Uh, I heard I heard footsteps coming down the hallway in my apartment. I knew they were coming in the room, get cold. Uh, my blood get cold. They were choking me. I couldn't yell the name Jesus. I went through that for 30 days because people from Haiti, Cuba, Miami, New York City were doing witchcraft to kill me because they didn't want me to release the secrets of the demonic kingdom and expose them. So, but in 2023, it was a a, a, a place. I, I got beyond blessed in 2020. I received my doctorate's degree. And divinity from from Christian Life University. I received my current bachelor's. I received my ordination papers. But on the other side of the spectrum, there was a price to pay. My mom's got cancer. My mom was 76, 77, 76, got cancer, 77 now. Went to her last chemo. Uh, I lost my eyesight for six months. I, uh, somehow I was in Texas preaching and my eyes, uh, I lost my eyesight completely. 90% uh, of my eyesight was gone. I couldn't see completely at all. So I couldn't drive anywhere to get food, so I managed. It took 35, 40 minutes before I was able to get a lift to get back to Manhattan to see my doctors. And I stayed in Manhattan, separated from my wife for a while, and then my marriage was under siege demonically, uh, uh, under siege demonically. Uh, I mean, even talking about divorce and stuff like that, that's how much a demonic. And then my daughter was being tormented. My daughter would call me and say, hey, Dad, I don't know if this week I want to live. I want to maybe take my life away. So, and my mom, you know, the hospital was saying to my mom, you got cancer in your stomach, but if it goes up to your chest, you know, we can't do nothing for you. You're going to pass away. 
So all these things were being bombarded in my life. And then plus I was doing ministry, Pastor Ben. I was traveling with my eyes. I couldn't see. I would take pictures of the of the things in the airport. I would enlarge my phone to see the, the, the signs of the airport. And through all this, uh, it been it, it been a place of, of breaking, you know, a breaking of, of, of coming to a place, seeing the Lord Jesus Christ in a whole different way. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Evangelist, for just sharing and opening your heart like that. Um, you know, a lot of times as ministers, we can be closed up and, you know, we don't want to be vulnerable. And obviously we should protect ourselves, guard ourselves, be wise. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for opening up your own journey because so many people can say you're an anointed vessel of God. It's picture perfect. But, uh, you know, here you're dealing with things. And a lot of people don't know. I mean, you were dealing with things when we were together one year ago and, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't necessarily share about the warfare, but we're sharing about the goodness of God. And uh, isn't that Amen. something? Because you said it was the year of the most blessing, but also there was a lot of spiritual warfare and attack. The most attacks ever in 24 years of serving the Lord. The most horrific attacks. Not knowing if I was going to get a phone call in the middle of the night that my, my daughter suicide herself. Knowing I get a middle call at night that, that maybe the chemo wasn't working, my mom wasn't gonna make it. Uh, the relationship with my wife was upside down, and I, I'm I'm in love with my wife. My wife is a my wife is a I carry her picture everywhere I go. My wife is a hottie. Come on. And uh, my wife is beautiful. I love my wife, but I know it's not flesh and blood. I know it's what behind the scenes, what the devil's trying to bring, try to fragment. And people, I think people people think that the more the anointing God put on you, the more the responsibility, the more the calling. The ministry got put on you, the more the weight got put on you, the more the crushing comes with that. And it comes to a place of really separating yourself from yourself and saying, Lord, I'm 100% giving you everything that I got because without you, I'm going to make it. Well, like you said earlier, Evangelist, uh, now I should call you doctor, amen. But uh, <laughs> there is a price to pay. And a lot of people can say, you're under spiritual attack and warfare. Is there an open door? Is there an open door in your heart? And a lot of people can presume and assume that. And we're going to talk about that after this break. We will see you very soon. Breaker 2.0. Now my guest today, Prophet Jesse Sham. We're going to talk about breakthrough in dreams and visions. God wants to take us into those deeper places, deeper in the river, deeper in His Spirit. It's very important that we stay hungry for God this hour and we have an expectation for the Lord to move in miracles and signs and wonders. Are you ready for breakthrough in dreams and visions? We talked about breakthrough in dreams and visions. Expect it, believe it and dream big. God bless. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back from the break. And today on The Breaker 2.0, we have a very special guest, Deliverance Minister Evangelist John Ramirez. Evangelist, or should I say doctor, welcome back to the broadcast. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much, Pastor Ben. I'm just John, and I uh, just want to do what God called me to do. But I, I'm grateful to be here and, sh and really share this moment to touch people's lives. Amen. Well, we are talking about breakthrough and spiritual warfare. And before the break, you were sharing how 2023 was the most difficult year for you. And there was a lot of glory and a lot of blessings, but also spiritual warfare and attack. Now, I'm sure many of our watchers right now, they can relate with this. 
It's called the double-edged sword of God. It's bitter and sweet. It's dreadful, <laughs> but it's also great. So it's the double-edged sword of God. But a lot of people kind of wonder, evangelists, uh, was there an open door, right? I mean, of course we need to pay a price, but was there an open door? And people can presume that about yourself or others when we go to spiritual attack. What's your response to that? Well, I, I think I think I think a lot of times we have to search ourselves. Right? I mean, the open door, let the Holy Spirit search us because David says, "Search my heart, Lord." Uh, I think we need to search ourselves. I think in this case is the magnitude of the blessing has to come with the magnitude of the battle. You know, because you can't get a, a million dollar blessing with a five dollar battle. You know, it's impossible. You know, it has to it has to go parallel with each other in the spiritual warfare. You know, the greater the blessing, the greater the battle. The greater the anointing, the greater the trial. The greater, the greater the calling, the more testing. Amen? And, and and it has to parallel to each other. Yes, we have to search for open doors. I'm not going to be ignorant to say I'm not a perfect man. We, none of us are. We walk genuine with the Lord every day, every single day. We walk genuine with the Lord Jesus Christ. But, you know, we make mistakes here and there. But the, the, the reality of my battle was basically the Lord said, I'm going to pour this new blessing upon you, but you have to be crushed. And you have to let the devil come at you. In four different ways. Not only one, but four different ways the devil have to come at you. In all four ways, you didn't know which way, you didn't know which one to say, which one was bigger, which one was more intense. They were, Paul said, I was crushed on every side, but I was not destroyed. Mm. Well, <clears throat> uh, I like what you said at our conference last year. You said, you know, Goliath is what promoted David to become the king of Israel. And Amen. Uh, Amen. God is about to promote and elevate, but we need to remain in the place of purity as we break through. Now, let me ask Amen. you this, Evangelist. Obviously, you are a pioneer of deliverance. <laughs> you were talking about witchcraft and deliverance on a mainstream level when it was quite unpopular, right? And uh, Absolutely. What, what was that like, in a sense, being a pioneer uh, uh, of these topics? Well, I, I, th I, think, I think to me it was like I felt lonely. I felt like... Uh, I feel like, man, and anybody, anybody like, like, you know, when, he, when, when Elijah asked, I'm the only one out here doing this. And, and God said, no, there's 7,000 of us that bend their knee to bail. And I think I felt lonely for a while knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm exposing and I'm sharing about witchcraft. Mm. And this was all new to the church. The church didn't want to touch witchcraft, demonic demons. The church didn't want to talk stronghold, generation of curses, curses, bloodline curses, tormenting devils, or whether you were molested or the person which, uh, uh, abuse in any in any level. The church didn't want, didn't want to do that. The church wanted to do three points and three point sermon, collect the tithes and offerings, send you home. And I'm the, I'm the only one out there, like like you know, in the, like John the Baptist you know, in the wilderness, to talk about you know witchcraft and this and that. And people say, oh, you glorifying the devil too much. No, I'm exposing the devil. Mm. But I, I I believe that you know God God has called me uh, in in a place in in the body of Christ. To bear fruit, right? You were saying people out there they, in, the, in, the, in the social media, they got influence, but they have no fruit. They got gifts, but they got influence, but no fruit, right? right? So my, I want to bear fruit. I don't want to have influence. I, I don't want influence. I want to bear fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ. So it was a tough time, but God, like I said, God holds the pen of my story. And he's doing, and he's writing a bestseller. Come on, somebody. And uh, I, I love that. God's writing a bestseller. Um, and not a sellout, but, you know, it, it's being sold. It's being preached about all across mm -hmm. the earth. Uh, but I like what you said earlier. The church didn't want to touch this type of stuff. What well, was it because the people are afraid? They've never seen it, never been taught about it. Why, why do you think a lot of the ministers, preachers, people wanted to stay away from it? Well, I think, I think a lot of things, you know, ministers don't trust God. You know, and they, they don't want to confront the devil. They talk about the devil, but they don't confront the devil, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of church, oh, devil did, but you don't confront. You don't set no one free. We don't do deliverance, right? Uh, then an an another aspect of it, you know, you 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 rather you rather be like the ostrich and stick your head in the sand and deal with the situation, right? So you don't trust God enough to set people free in your church. You don't trust God enough to walk in that kind of anointing. You don't trust God. Thank God for the remnant of the churches today like yours. That you grab the devil by the throat and you don't know you let him know what time it is and we appreciate your ministry we appreciate pastors and leaders uh investors of honor like yourself that that a few but you know god doesn't need god doesn't need a thousand and i'm god needs a few people that are willing to take it to the enemy's camp wow amen and amen well obviously casting out devils 
spiritual warfare, breaking through spiritual warfare. Um, you know, I mean, that's totally biblical. Look at Mark 16, 17. These signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. And uh, I believe it's so important for us to understand the power of God, which is natural and supernatural. Um, however, when you begin to move in the power of God, the enemy is going to try to attack. And that's why we want to talk about keys to break through in spiritual warfare. Evangelist John, I'm sure there's some viewers watching right now. Maybe they want to commit suicide or they're saying, I'm still experiencing that type of attack and warfare in my life. What are some keys for our viewers to experience breakthrough in spiritual warfare? I, I think the key for me and for what I went through in 2023, for me, this is the key. It, it is basically, it's one-on-one Christianity. My, my, I can't be a man of God if I'm not a man of the Word of God. Yes. I can't be a yes. woman of God if I'm not the woman, a woman of the Word of God, right? Because if Jesus went to the wilderness and he was being tormented, he was being, he, the devil tried to torment him beyond, beyond his humanity, right? And his weakest moment, Jesus said, the word. Jesus defeat the devil with the word. I think we want to defeat the devil, but we don't, we don't, we, you know, the devil understands one thing. He's going to come after humanity, torment you, fragment you, scorn your mind, torment your mind, put, put sickness, infirmity in your life, bring generation of curses, activate generation of curses in your life, in your, your humanity. But if your spirit man is strong and your spirit man is a man of the word of God, and then you'll be able to fight the good fight. And then the oppression, the oppression, the suicide, the tormenting devils, the past, whatever the devil is trying to bring at you, you are able to fight this thing and have the victory complete and fully. Because one of the things I remember in my life in 2002, I remember all the miracles that God did for me. So if the Israelites came out the Red Sea, they, when they came to the water, Murrah, they should have remembered that miracle. If, the, if, the, if God did the 5,005 loaves, if God fed 5,000 people in a couple, of, a couple of chapters, a chapter later, a couple of verses later, God fed 4,000, the, 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 the disciples should say, yo, we did with 5,000, we could do with 4,000. I think the devil knows how to attack the mind of the believer to bring short memories and not to remember the things that God has done for you so you can doubt and have fear and unbelief so the devil can incarcerate you with a stronghold or bondage over you. Because you'll be like the Israelites, forget the miracles, the signs and wonders, and keep complaining instead of singing a worship song and have a spirit of gratitude. Amen and amen. You are preaching good, man of God. Um, in a few minutes, we're going to begin to pray for our friends right now because there's amen. a breakthrough, there is deliverance, there is freedom for you. Um, but earlier you said, again, it's the word of God, and we are very forgetful, and that's why the Bible says, Remember, remember what he did in Egypt. Remember how he split the Red Sea. Remember. And that's why it's so important for us to continue to meditate on God's word day and night, night and day. And he will give us success in all of our ways. What are yeah. some of your go-to verses right now, Evangelist? Well, my my go-to my go to verses is, man, brother, <laughs> Psalms 20, 21, the Lord is my shepherd. I tell the devil. That means I'm in relationship with him. You can't do nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. That means I'm in relationship with him. You can't do nothing. Psalms 23, 5. The Lord prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. I stand there. I'm in the wilderness, but I have a table. I have hope. I have victory. I have, I have anointing. I have a calling. I have a purpose. God is not done with me yet. I remind the devil that the greatest he that he's with me, that he's in the world. But these, you have to not only talk, but you have to believe it. You have to stand on it. You have to walk in it. And, and eventually you have to finish with it. Because you can't just quote something. The sons of Sceva quoted a lot of good stuff. Come on. And some little devils ran away. But when the real devil showed up, he said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. In other words, they have authority. And, and they, 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 got, they got an anointing. But you, I don't know. Because we need, we need to understand the last thing I say. That you need you, now the scriptures. You need they need to be engrafted in your heart and know that God knows where you are, where He's taking you, and He will never leave you, forsake you. And as long as you can stand at that, you can crush the head of the serpent in Jesus' name. Come on, Amen and Amen. I love Psalm twenty-three and of course Psalm <laughs> ninety-one. I love all the Psalms, honestly. Psalm sixteen, Psalm eighteen, 
uh, 19. But uh, this has been so rich. Evangelist, before we release a prayer for the next 45 seconds, can you share uh, about how people can follow you, find you, or about any of your merchandise or products? Well, I think I think people can go to you. They can go to Amazon. Put John Ramirez. I have a main, um, the Lord has blessed me uh, to put some amazing books out there by the anointing and the, and, and, and the unction, the Holy Spirit to write some spiritual warfare books. You go to my website. You go to johnramirez.org. You can go to the website and basically uh, there's a lot of materials there. Uh, you can go to YouTube. Put my name. Part, but, but, but Mary, the only Puerto Rican in YouTube. You find me quick. And uh, you can go to YouTube and put my name in, and there's a lot of free teachings on spiritual warfare that you can, there's a lot of resources that bless you, and they're all free. Wow, I love that. You have the free for the masses, and as well, if people want to dive in deeper, make sure you get his books and his courses. Those are powerful tools. Evangelist, can you just release a prayer of breakthrough uh, for the viewers watching for the next 45 seconds? Please go ahead. Amen. I just want to say to the viewers, and we come in agreement because there's power in agreement, there's power in unity between you and I, and we, we share the same battlefield, and we know how to confront the devil. We don't just talk about him on this show. We let him know what time it is. So I just want to pray for the believer. Whatever you're going through, remember, storms don't laugh. Don't make, don't make permanent decisions on temporary storm. Be still and know that he's God. So right now, where, where you find yourself, living room, in the car, wherever you find yourself today, oh, Holy Spirit is not, Holy Spirit is not, it's not, it's not confined by, by geographic zip code or location or an island or whatnot. Invite the Holy Spirit into the battlefield. Make God part of the equation of your battle. Invite him to your battlefield. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray, we break, destroy, dismantle. We don't ask you to remove nothing, because if you do, we get it incomplete. We ask you to anoint us, to pour the oil of heaven, put the fire upon us, Lord, that we crush this devil. We put the judgment of God upon every wicked spirit. We put the judgments of God upon every devil, every witchcraft, every tormenting devil, every sickness, every infirmity. Father God, we curse you to the rule that us and die in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand in the promises of God, in the word of God, in the truth of God. And we move forward because the Holy Spirit is going before us, in the name of Jesus Christ, we faint not, we we, will shrink, we don't shrink back, and we move forward to crush the head of the serpent. And this devil that is in front of me today, this is the last day I see him, because he is going to drown in the blood of Jesus, same way he drowned, that Pharaoh drowned in the Red Sea. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Woo, amen and amen. I hope y'all receive that power and that breakthrough. Evangelist John Ramirez, thank you for being on the show today. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, my brother. Pleasure, always. Wow. I hope you enjoyed today's show on The Breaker 2.0. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with Evangelist Dr. John Ramirez as we discuss breakthrough in spiritual warfare. Please continue to share this broadcast, and we'll see you soon.